just have, uh, I forgot to say the, the, there is a hall of fame in artificial intelligence, like for baseball and, and uh, football, and Professor Red is in the artificial intelligence hall of fame. <laughs> so our next uh, speaker is Professor Richard Edwin Stearns. He is famous because uh, he wrote a seminal paper together with Juris Hartmanis about um, the complexity of computation, and he defined some of the complexity classes in that paper. He uh, obtained the Turing Award in 1993. He got his PhD on game theory at Princeton in 1961, and then he went to work to General Electric in 1964, and uh, that's uh, where he met Juris uh, Hermanis, and they wrote a famous paper on the computational complexity of algorithms. Um, the Citation for the Turing Award says that he obtained the prize for the complexity measures defined by the computation time on multi-tape Turing machines that he introduced together with Harmanis. And now if you study computer science and you go to, you go to have a course on uh, computational complexity, one of the first things you probably do is work in, with multi-tape Turing machines. That was the work that Professor Stearns and uh, Yuris Harmanis started at the time and uh, I'm very happy that he will give us a talk about the strategies for extensive form games. Thank you. <coughs> I picked up a little cold, so bear with me a little bit. One of my interests has always been game theory, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the stuff in game theory I'm doing now. So the all right. not working either. Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> so this is my uh, research goal. I want to use uh, <clears throat> linear equations to describe a set of strategies for a player in the extensive form game. Now notice a couple of things here. I'm talking about describing the strategy set for a single player. And I want to use, set up linear equations, hopefully with a few very, <clears throat> small number of variables that will describe all the strategies available to that player. And uh, depending on the application, you can may be helpful in actually telling the player which, which of those strategies to use. OK, well, well these the set of strategies uh, of the properties uh, listed here. The strategies must have the same power as arbitrary strategies. So if I limit myself to a set of strategies described by a small set of equations, I want to be sure with that within that set there is a, a strategy uh, just as good as an arbitrary strategy. As I say only a small number of variables are used. And then I want the strategies to be easy, <coughs> easy to implement. Uh, that, that is describing a kind of a random set of choices, how do you actually pick that? <coughs> and I want the methods to work even for players without perfect recall. Well, the reason for this is that with perfect recall, uh, it's been known for 60 or 70 years what to do in that case. Okay, well, I'm going to talk first a little, a little remind you what a game is. And before we talk about an extensive form game, 
Let's just talk about a rather simple case so we can talk, tell, talk about pure and mixed strategies. Okay, well, this matrix shows a, uh, a game. The game goes as follows. Uh, the blue player picks uh, either A or B, and uh, the red player picks L or R. And these choices are made in, without knowing what the other player has picked. And then you look into the uh, array, and it tells you uh, what the payoff is to the blue and to the, and to the red. And it happens in this game that the, in all cases the payoffs add, add up to uh, eight. That's not and that's not necessarily always true. Okay, so the blue player comes to me and says, "Well, what should I do?" And the two simplest things I could say, I could say, "All right, pick row A." And if row A is, picks row A, then he's guaranteed he'll get at least two because the red player may pick R. And the second possibility is I might recommend picking row B. And in that case, he is only guaranteed uh, one, which occurs when uh, red plays L. And these are called pure strategies because they're the... Uh, Fundamental, fundamental instructions you have to give finally when you make your play. Well, there's a, uh, another answer, and that is instead of saying pick A or pick B, I uh, simply tell Blue how to pick a strategy. So uh, we do that with a mixed strategy, for which I have a sample down here. And that is I tell Blue, well, pick randomly, pick two-fifths of the time A, pick three-fifths of the time B. And uh, you see, regardless if red picks L or R, uh, uh, the expectation is that he'll earn 2.6. So this shows a couple things here. One is the reason why we're interested in mixed strategies in the first place, because they give you this uh, <coughs> extra power, and also the idea that uh, we make recommendations is how to pick a pure strategy rather than recommending a pure strategy. And if Red comes up to me and says, what should I do? I say, well, Red, you can pick one-fifth L and four-fifths R. And that ensures Red an average of 5.4. And you notice that 5.4 and 2.6 add up to 8 which is the amount that's being distributed. And that's a property of constant sum games, that uh, when each player uses the mixed strategy, which guarantees them the most, uh, no further advantage is, is available. OK, well, now we want to look at this as a <coughs> game in extensive form. Now, in extensive form games, we always think of the game as unfolding step by step. And we uh, show that in a form of a tree. So we're going to say, all right, red is going to pick first uh, between L and R, and then blue is going to uh, pick. Uh, but there is a catch in that uh, while blue is going second, somehow he's ignorant as to what red did. So we get uh, something that looks like this. We show at the root here that red is picking L and R. And then uh, blue uh, could be in either one of those nodes. <coughs> <coughs> but we say, uh, no, those are in the same... <coughs> Excuse me. They're in the same information set. So in this case, I say that the two blue nodes are an information set S, and the interpretation of an information set is that uh, the player at that point in the game doesn't know which of the nodes uh, the game is at. So 
uh, this extensive form here then captures the same idea as on the previous slide, uh, just in a step-by-step -step, uh, fashion. All right, well, let's look at what a uh, extensive form game is more generally. Well, first of all, it's a rooted tree. So the game starts at the root uh, and proceeds. Uh, second of all, uh, the interior nodes are called player nodes. In this case, I have uh, three players, blue, red, and yellow. So all the interior nodes are one of those uh, three colors. Then further, the uh, nodes of each player are partitioned in information sets, which I have indicated by labeling the, labeling the nodes. So in this case, blue is five sets uh, going from A to C. All right, now for each information set, there's an action set, a set of actions that the uh, player can take. And important to understand that if there are two nodes in the same information set, they have the same action set. So uh, otherwise, if they're different, then of course the player would know which one he was at. Okay, and then finally we put the payoffs at the terminal nodes. And so each of these terminal nodes would have a payoff to each of the three players. Now, because I'm only interested in describing strategy sets, not how to, not recommending which one you pick, the, uh, what the actual payoffs are irrelevant here. Just want to describe the strategy sets, and so that's why I've uh, simply indicated them with dollar signs. Okay, now notice these uh, two nodes uh, in information set B. When the uh, player is in information set B, he doesn't know what he did above at A. He doesn't know whether he went left or whether he went right. So he has forgotten what he did. And so this is an example of not having perfect recall. So perfect recall is remembering what, at least what you did. And uh, in this case, Blue does not remember what he did. So this is not perfect recall. OK, well, how can we interpret this? Uh, one way to interpret it uh, <coughs> is think of each player as be really being a team of players, all working toward the same end. And so the, this team has one player for each information set. And a, a player then may have to act, not knowing if another team member has acted earlier or what that teammate knew or did. And then before the play starts, the team coach gives them instructions to the players what to do. That's basically somebody finally has to say which pure strategy the uh, team has to use. So in game theory jargon, we say that the team members, or we call them agents, and the coach we call the player, and the instructions that the coach gives are a pure strategy. Okay, well, here are some pure strategy examples for the the same game. So uh, blue uh, picks left at A and left at B and C and right at D and uh, E. And I've indicated that with uh, wherever there's a blue node, there's a heavy arrow matching uh, what's called for in the pure strategy. And I've done a similar thing for the pure strategy for red and uh, for, for yellow. So what happens when uh, these three players pick these pure, three pure strategies? Well, the game follows a path down the tree to the uh, node, final node there indicated in green. So the yeah, 
what happened there. Anyway, okay, so the looking at this pure strategy just for a player blue now, and we uh, ask what could happen depending on what the other players do. Well, you see that uh, big block arrow, and uh, those two nodes cannot be reached when blue plays this strategy because before you get there, blue is, sends the game in a different direction. And all the other name, nodes can be reached if the other players permit. So that means if I use a mixed strategy, then they, uh, they, they have probabilities that each of nodes that can be reached. We call these path probabilities. Okay, so just a reminder what we just saw. Uh, the path probabilities for blue edge are determined by the mixed strategies used by player blue and not by anything else. So whether the thing is reachable, that would depend on what blue chose. And uh, being reachable as uh, not in the control of the other players. And uh, two mixed strategies, if they yield the same path probabilities, are indistinguishable. Because when the, uh, an outsider looking at the game and measuring the probabilities, uh, he can't tell how those probabilities were generated. So, uh, two ideas here then, key ideas, that blue controls blue probabilities and the, uh, we have the idea of now of strategies having the same power. Okay, well since it uh, depends only on what uh, the path probabilities for blue depend only on the the uh, choices of blue, uh, we extract from the tree this, what I call the skeleton for blue, in which I have shown two kinds of nodes, uh, choice nodes, which each choice node here is just a copy of the blue nodes that appear in the, in the uh, tree, and action nodes, which show the actions that are taken at each, each uh, node. So what and it was used to be represented <coughs> in, the, in the description by an edge is now represented by a uh, by a, a node, which is mathematically convenient. Okay, well the and the reason that and we want to have these two kinds of nodes as we have this situation. Uh, after uh, blue gets to uh, node D and picks right, well, there are two possibilities that he could arrive at. And uh, I still only want to have one edge per action, so putting this action node in between uh, gives me a way of representing that. Okay, well, historically, there have been three kinds of strategies uh, considered. One is a pure strategy, which, as we've said, is an action specified for each information set. And a mixed strategy, by definition, would be a probability specified for each pure strategy. And the new thing is the behavior strategy. And that is, you specify a probability uh, for each of the agents, and the agents may randomly select uh, their actions independently of each other. All right, well, let's uh, just compare the numbers here. Uh, the number of pure strategies is you have to pick uh, an action for each information set. So it's the product of the sizes of the action symbols, that the action sets that determine the number of pure strategies. And the uh, next strategy then, by definition, is the probability for each uh, strategy. So you have that same product as the number of probabilities. 
But if you go to a behavior strategy, you only have to pick a probability for each action set, and so uh, you merely have the sum. And of course, the sum is normally much smaller than the product. Okay, so let's look at an example of uh, perfect recall. And this is an example because uh, you see, for example, at node, uh, at node D, there are two occurrences of node D, but in both cases, uh, they result from going left at C and from going left at A. <coughs> so the player at information set D knows what he did previously. Okay, and from that skeleton, I derive what I call a plan basis, where each information set is shown only once, and we show the uh, relationship of the information sets. So the fact that information set follows from information set C follows from after B goes left, that's indicated by uh, the edge there. Okay, well now here I've expanded the same, the same diagram so that the skeleton is shown on the left and the <coughs> plant basis is shown on, on the right. And when I attach probabilities to the plan basis, uh, then we get what I call a realization plan. So uh, there are two kinds of probabilities you might associate. One is shown in red, which is behavior probabilities. Uh, for example, at node uh, A, blue pick will be one half, one half, and, and so forth. And the second is the path probabilities, which are the probabilities that a given node is, is reached. So, uh, for example, if, uh, for C, uh, at node C, um, the uh, probabilities are three quarters of two thirds and one quarter of two thirds. So. Okay, so uh, several things to notice here. Uh, one thing to notice is that the path probabilities get path probabilities back on the skeleton. As you want to know, uh, the, the probability of reaching node uh, label F, you can just look at the look at the chart on the right and see that, that probability. Okay, well, the, uh, <coughs> this realization plan also gives a method of selecting the strategy. Well, the obvious method is that you just uh, randomly tell each agent to randomly pick according to his probabilities. But there is a second uh, way, which I call the picking algorithm. And that is you start at the uh, root, and wherever you pick a action node, you pick uh, all its children. Whenever you encounter a choice node, you pick one child according to the given probabilities. And going down the, working our way down the tree, uh, we get this probability, this pure strategy listed on the bottom. Uh, and you see that A is right because and we picked right on the tree and, and so forth. And we notice that D has never been reached. And so no probability has been specified for D. And we don't mind that. Uh, so what we have here sometimes called a reduced pure strategy. And if we can find reduced pure strategies, that's that's fine. Okay, well, so far everything has, <coughs> well, let's, let's go on. Uh, just to convince you that they, all these probabilities form linear equations, uh, the sum of the path probabilities at a given node is equal to the path prob the probability of the parent. And of course, the behavior strategies add up to one. So we are dealing with 
uh, linear equations. Okay, so, <coughs> so given a plan basis then, if we assign a variable for each action node, then we get equations describing a set of strategies. Uh, solution to the equations then is a mixed strategy. And given the mixed strategy, the picking algorithm implements the mixed strategy. And the path probabilities on the basis are the path probabilities on the skeleton. So everything is, everything is uh, nice. So uh, every, everything is so nice that uh, we see there are several interpretations of strategy from the, from the tree, whether you use the behavior, behavior strategies, whether you just tell people randomly pick, or whether you use the picking algorithm. Uh, we have the plan basis, and the plan basis is very, very similar to the, uh, to the skeleton. All right, well, I want to mention a couple of papers here. One is a paper by Harold Kuhn back in 1953, where perfect recall was defined, the behavior strategies were defined, the equivalence of behavior strategies and mixed strategies uh, was established. And uh, another paper uh, by Kohler and Megiddo, uh, again, working with perfect recall games, but in this paper, they use path probabilities very effectively. And uh, using path probabilities, they get a small linear program, and the optimal behavior strategies can be found solving that program, so the game is solved in polynomial time. So wouldn't it be nice uh, if we could uh, extend that result to some cases where the, you don't have perfect recall. And so my hope is then that the, using a, a little larger set of equations, but un, not unmanageable, uh, you can also solve the uh, game. Okay, so our goal then is to generalize the idea of a plan basis and a realization plan to apply to games without perfect recall. And we're, we're, going to, we're going to do this by having a new kind of plan basis. So basically we're asking the question, how can, how can we relax the concept of a plan basis and still get all these uh, nice properties? So the nice properties are that the picking algorithm must work. Well, the realized strategies must have the same power as arbitrary mixed strategies. And the path probabilities on the skeleton must be easily found from the realized path probabilities. So um, I'm not going to go into the uh, technical definitions that make all these things uh, happen, but the so we have a method of obtaining our generalized basis by performing sequence of operations on the skeleton. So I'm just going to illustrate the, the new kind of uh, plan basis with a uh, simple example. And in this example, the, an operation I call an insert has changed the skeleton into a plan basis in one step. Okay, well, looking at the uh, skeleton, you see the uh, problem here uh, that in information set C, uh, Blue does not know whether uh, he reached the C going through A or whether it reached it going through B. So it does not have uh, perfect recall. Okay, so to solve that problem, we're going to take that uh, node C and essentially move it up so that uh, we make the decision first as to what to do at C and then uh, make the other decisions later. Well, we still, when you get to A, you still have to know which 
which uh, uh, take a, take an action depending on what happened at C. So that means that all these nodes leading up to the nodes that were moved have to be duplicated. So we've uh, duplicated them here. Now, of course, this is expanding the size of the tree. And, uh, <clears throat> but it's a way of correlating what happens at C and, and A and B. OK, well, once the, the, these copies are made, then uh, we still have the, the pieces after the C. So a little piece uh, going from E gets attached uh, here. Now notice now that the path to E on the left goes uh, from A and then C and then to E. Whereas uh, now we have, the, we have the same things, but in a different order, C, then A, then E. So this is one, another degree of freedom that we've put into the, put into our plan basis. Okay, and continuing attach these uh, other pieces. Okay, so, uh, but now we notice that uh, D has been duplicated, and yet D does not uh, go back to the skeleton, and you see that uh, D had nothing to do with C. So we have duplicated something uh, unnecessarily, and we get around that by saying, well, let's no longer use a tree, but let's use a directed acyclic graph. So we uh, move the, uh, we move the one copy of D and attach it in two different places. And so the D uh, appears there as it did originally. Okay, so the features of the plan, the generalized plan basis, then uh, information sets may appear more than once. You've seen that in the, the example. And information sets may appear in a different order than on the skeleton. And the basis may be directed to a simple graph instead of a tree. Uh, and, uh, but furthermore, this is a point we didn't go into. The path probabilities on the skeleton are linear related to the path probabilities on the basis, even though things appeared in, in different order. And uh, it happens, but I'm not going to elaborate on any further. Okay, well, there's some disclosure, full disclosure here. Uh, first, the operations uh, can increase the number of nodes because you saw that of the duplication increase the number of nodes. And uh, therefore, a sequence of operations can increase the number of nodes uh, exponentially, in which case the, the, the is not very useful. And uh, there are no methods which always find a small plan basis and there are NP hardness uh, reasons for that. So, <coughs> So we're looking for things that are uh, the cases which are, are close to perfect recall. So the idea is if you're a little bit off, then yeah, you have a few more variables to deal with. And instead of being a big cliff where you fall off the cliff by introducing some imperfect recall, it's kind of a slope down the there are things nearby which are almost as uh, computationally viable. And, uh, and that's the kind of thing uh, we see elsewhere in complexity theory. Uh, yes, satisfiability is hard, but some things are, uh, many cases are not, not so hard. And, uh, 
things are easier for planar graphs, but if the, the graph is almost planar, well then these techniques uh, still apply with small modifications. Okay, so the complexity implications are this. The small description suffice that players have perfect recall. A large description may be needed if a player asks, uh, lacks perfect recall. But now we've shown that there's something in between. That is a fairly, uh, you may have a fairly small description if the player has near perfect recall. So thank you for listening. So we have uh, time for a few questions. Yes, please, they're in the middle. <coughs> so is there any studies on how to uh, include feedback in your plan derivation? Uh, I don't quite understand. The, I think the answer is no. <laughs> okay, I, I don't see any further questions. Uh, let us thank uh, Professor Stearns for his talk. Thank you. <laughs> now we.